We've got a very full van to unload today. One of those jobs where I'm glad that I upgraded to this large VW Crafter van. The project we're fitting looks like this. This is a bird's eye view. So all of these units have been made pre-sprayed and the smaller ones have been part assembled in the workshop with the bigger ones arriving flat pack because the house we're fitting in is a typical Sheffield Terrace in Walkley with very little space to get stuff in. So I'll just show you the route up and show you the space we're working in. It's quite a typical arrangement of Sheffield houses. We've got a little hallway here with a sharp right turn up the stairs. And the room we're fitting in is here to the left. It's a house of book lovers, so they wanted to have more space for their collection of books. They both work at the university. And the design that we've come up with will have a large run of bookcases here that also incorporate um, guitars, which will be hanging in the alcoves either side of that unit labelled E there. And that's all along that wall. And the solution that we came up with for this little cubby space is we have the door taken off and shelf units that will run on into that space which should help the room to feel bigger because there'll be a continuation of the shelving carrying on down into there and a, a wall mounted bookcase here under which will be the guitar cases let's see if I can show you more detail on that <coughs> That's the wall unit in the alcove next to the window. These are the assembly drawings that have been used at the workshop. This is a section of the, the widest unit, labelled unit E, which will go here in the middle of the, the wall. Details on cable access. and a, a plan which will help us to lay out the plinths, which is our first job. first step in setting out a project like this is to put the ladder plinths down. Now these act as the footprint of the units, they have the exact same uh, dimensions lengthwise. On this project, although the units meet at the corner, I mean to say they'll meet here and there'll just be a void space here, we felt that making the plinths so that they join like this would enable us to, to level them better. I will screw them together with Craig screws, just driven straight in. But first, I'm just laying them in place to give me a guide as to where to cut the carpet. And what this enables me to see is, for example, the, the, the wall here is not square. It's at a bit of an, an obtuse angle. 
So I can immediately see that the cover panel, which will come up the side of the unit here, will, uh, will be a bit deeper than planned. Now we leave a 20 millimeter scribing allowance on panels like that, which should be enough. But to check it, I can offer up a level um, from, from the back of that unit, knowing where it's going to land, and then possibly uh, change the positioning of these plinths. So, so I, I might just uh, sort of bring these ones a little bit tilted to reduce the gap over there. What we've also done to allow for this door frame, because we're going to have a, a continuous run of units running into that space there, the door frame kicks in, so the plinth also kicks in a little bit and there's one unit in front of it that is shallower. The one beyond it is as deep as the rest, but we felt it would be supported sufficiently by a plinth. And again, having these plinths laid down just gives me a visual guide, uh, because you see this wall here is quite badly plastered. I'm going to, again, put a, a level against it to check for plumb, measuring back off the front edge of the plinth to, so I know where the back of that unit will be, and just check the plumb so that the, I, I know the wall isn't just kicking in, which would then stop the unit sitting level. Because the last thing we want to do is commit to the position of these plinths and then come to fitting the units and find that something binds against the wall. Uh, our standard method is to allow about a 20 millimeter gap, um, which is really based on the plinth simply butting up to the skirting, which leaves about 20 millimeters to the wall, which generally allows for even the worst kicking in of, of the wall to not then bind against the unit. So the plan that I'm working off to, to lay all these out is, is this one here. The stage we're at now is the flints have been leveled and we've got a difference in level of about an inch to around about this point. So we've, we've put our leveling feet at zero height here, so it's touching the floor, because my starting point was to find the highest point, which was here. And then we've jacked everything up using the adjustable feet with, with packers underneath as necessary. Uh, we're looking at the right place. Yeah. And what we then do is, once that's level, we uh, we put these brackets that tie, that tie everything down. Because we found in the past that we'll level the plinth, then we'll put the weight on it, and that weight sometimes squashes a little bit of flex in the feet. So if we pull it down with the bracket first, we know that's rock solid, and it also can't skate about when the weight of the units goes on. The next step is to, is to cover this which is best done now because it allows me to secret fix with, with some Craig screws behind that plinth before the units go on. So the method for doing this, the scribing method, is to clamp the plinth fascia at a measured distance, which I've chosen as 36 mil just because it's easy to do with two bits of 18 millimeters. So I've clamped that projecting above the ladder plinth by that amount, knowing that I can then scribe that line with a little bit of pressure on the carpet. I can put a pencil just above those two blocks, which will draw me a line all along, which I've already checked um, doesn't sort of run off the thickness of the board because we've put enough scribing allowance on. Oh, there we go. So once I've once I've scribed that line right along, I know that the fascia will be able to drop down by that measured amount which will bring it to flush with the top of the lab plinth and it will have the profile of the sloping floor at the bottom fitting tight to the carpet. for this project over this inclined uh, reading surface, it's also like a music stand, 
Uh, we're using the Luke's system from Hayfully. Um, so we've already fed the, the cable through and that has been channeled down the side panel. Um, I think I took a photo of that that I could drop in. That comes out here by the socket. It actually comes out between those two, I uh, can't quite show it to you, between those two side panels. Uh, so the, the light strip, which is this one, which is called Luke's um, LED2043, that's the one we use most often, self-adhesive. That'll stick up into the channel there, and that will then be covered with, with this uh, plastic milky sort of cover. Uh, this is called the draw profile. They seem to design it for use in drawers, but we use it for most other things because it doesn't um, it doesn't set the light strip in too deep of a channel, and it, it gives a better cast of light. 